Hello everyone, I'm Luke Milky with Fusion Videos. I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a basic live stream for a classroom. I've been a teacher for nine, 10 years. I know it can be daunting being a teacher and also having to add on this thing of live stream. How do we do this? Well, there are a lot of things you can do. You can do the basic easy route of setting a webcam up and just clicking live on YouTube and boom, bada boom, you're good to go. Yes, that works, just 25, 35 bucks. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. It doesn't look great, but if that's all you can afford, that's all you can do, fine, that's great. I'd rather you do that than have nothing at all. There are a few things I am making assumptions on in this video. I am assuming, first of all, your computer is not from the Stone Age. It doesn't mean you have to have an incredible computer and it has to be the latest, greatest, and newest computer, but it will need a few basic things like USB-C, and it will also have to have the ability to have a decent process or nothing incredible but decent. I am also assuming that you have a decent internet connection because the more computers you have going live uploading at the same time, let's say you have 10 classes at once that need to live stream. You need to make sure your internet capability is able to handle that because if it's not you're just going to crash this and everyone's going to be frustrated. So you're going to have to look into make sure you have good enough internet to be able to handle all of this. If you don't have incredible internet, you can drop the resolution of what you're live streaming and that will be able to give, free up some of your bandwidth and won't be taking as much data, but you will still need to have a decent internet connection. There's no way around that. If you cannot get good internet where you are, I'm really not sure what the best option is for you, if you especially if you're required to make some type of live stream. You might have to start setting up some mobile hotspots on phones or something like that as backups to make sure you have the internet connections you need. So now that the assumptions are over, let's jump into what I recommend. I highly recommend the A10 Mini Pro. This is something I have come to absolutely love. It's not been out too long, but it's a solid piece of gear. I used to set up setups that were tens of thousands of dollars that now, if I would set them up, I would use basically just this, it's $295. So it's way, way cheaper than what used to be out there. And then just a relatively cheap camera like this, 250, 300 bucks, something like that, you can buy it online. Or you can even probably find something cheaper on eBay that's something used or something like that. And everything we are doing right now is actually running through this ATEM and this laptop I have right here. So this is something that you can relatively easy do while you're actually teaching, which for me is huge because all it really takes is running the HDMI out of here, or if your smartphone doesn't have an HDMI out, you can also get an HDMI splitter, and we'll talk about that later, some of the gear you're gonna need. And all it takes here is I can click camera two, and boom, now I'm on the smart board, which is absolutely awesome. I can click camera one, and I'm back to the camera. You can switch it around so one's the other option as well. However it fits your fancy, you can do that. It just takes a couple HDMI cables in the back, I can switch back and forth. So now if I write on the, the smart board here, I can easily show what's on the screen. Oh, they're like that. I can easily show what's on the screen that the rest of the class is seeing online. A couple reasons I would recommend being able to switch back and forth is if you're watching on a small device, you really don't want to see in the background something like this is going to be much smaller, much harder to read. And if you don't have a high-end camera like I'm actually using right here, it's actually gonna struggle reading something like a PowerPoint or something like that on a TV screen, or if you have it on like a projection type of system, it's really not gonna see it very well. The teacher's gonna be really dark to see it or the other way around. Usually it just doesn't work very well to put the camera on there. Also, if the teacher walks in front like this, it's easy to tell if you're blocking the view of a student. It's much harder to tell if a camera's view is being blocked because you can't really see it going, oh, I can't see around. So it's very easy to block it when you're a teacher from the view of the camera. So this way you can switch back and forth. But you might also have the option, because I know as a teacher, a lot of teaching is actually done through body language. And if I'm only showing here, there's no body language. Unless you are a really weird board, you're not kind of body language. So there's this nice little feature here. It's called the picture in picture. And so if I go back to the screen here and I turn it on, now I can actually put myself in the corner. I can bounce back and forth however I feel like I want to. Whee! So I can be put myself in a picture in picture, put myself in a small corner, but I can still have that interactive learning 
through body language. This is especially important in some of the languages or if there's learning disabilities or something like that. Body language is huge. And then you can switch back to just the camera when you aren't necessarily referencing something that's on the board or you can switch back and forth still as needed. So that's the real basics of how the ATEM Mini works. There are some other features and things like that, yes, we could go into, but I don't think it's really that important. Once something is set up and ready to roll, these things can basically just sit as they are. As I've been teaching and showing teachers, basically don't touch this thing other than switch cameras back and forth. It'll just stay set up, turn your camera on, click go, you're ready to roll. Don't have to worry about that. So the basic components what you're gonna need is you're gonna need an A10 mini switch, camera, HMI cables, USB cable, computer, and you might possibly need a HDMI duplicator or splitter, depending on what you're looking up. Usually it's called a splitter. I do not have a splitter sitting here right now. Uh, mine are all used up right now. I can't bring them out. But basically what it is is one HDMI sim comes in, two come out. That's basically what it is. So depending on your setup, you might need something like that. So if you're going to a smart board, you actually need to plug into the splitter. And then that way you can have one signal come to here and one thing will go into your smart board or whatever device you have there. So what you're gonna need for a computer is you're gonna need it to have the HDMI 3 capable because this requires HDMI 3, which is the higher end, so this is why you can't have such a dinosaur computer. Now this one here, I have it USB-C in both ends because this takes USB-C and this has the USB-C output. Now something I find odd is this board only comes with a power cord. It doesn't come with an HDMI cable and it does not come with any type of USB cable. So it's something you are gonna to have to purchase or already have one on hand to make that work. Now HDMI cable, how many of you needed these really depends on how many signals you're gonna be going with and if you have to have the splitter or not. If you need the splitter, you're gonna need extras of these to make sure you can have the input coming in and then coming out. If you go straight from the smart board like I do in this video here, you do not need quite as many of these because you have a straight output from your board. You're going to have one less HDMI. But typically you're going to need the HDMI coming out of the computer. That goes into a duplicator. So that duplicator is going to be sending two signals out. So you have the one coming in, two cables coming out. Because one will go into here, one will go into the board. And you also need an HDMI that goes from the camera into here. So you're probably going to need four. Your computer is going to be taking traditional HDMI more than likely and your smart boards and stuff like that are typically gonna be taking traditional HDMI or HDMI A. If you're wondering what that looks like, that's the bigger ones like this. Sometimes the smaller camcorders actually have a different output on the back here. They have an HDMI B instead of HDMI A. So it's a little bit smaller. You can see right there, it's not quite the same size as what traditional HDMI A cable looks like. So this is what your computer is going to need an HDMI A like this. So you're going to need A to A to get into your board or your switch. But you're going to need HDMI B to HDMI A more than likely coming from your camcorder into the switch. This is something you want to double check and make sure you get the correct cables for that. Sometimes they're micro, which is uh, HDMI C and there's also an HDMI D. So you want to make sure you get the correct HDMI cables to go from your camcorder to there. But most time the computer is gonna be something like an HDMI. They might be at a display port out, so you might need a display to HDMI just to make sure that works. And once again, this is what the USB cable looks like. But most of the time a small camcorder is being going to use HDMI B, a little bit type of port. So you're gonna need one HDMI B to HDMI A to get into here, and two or three HDMI A to A cables in your USB-C. You're, you're gonna need a computer that is decent. That's the basic components we're gonna to need to set up a live stream setup in your classroom that you also have the capabilities to switch back and forth between your monitors. So here's what the back of the A10 Mini looks like. You have four HDMI A inputs. You do have an HDMI out so you can actually see what you are putting on the screen so the teacher really wants to see what is on the screen for their students. You can also get an extra HDMI cable to put to here to a monitor so they can actually see what they are doing. Here's where the webcam out is. This will basically just function as a webcam inside the computer, but out here there's a whole lot more functions. There are additional mic inputs if you want to have a little bit better audio. You can have something like this. This is not necessarily super needed, but it is an option. 
And then you do have right here the ATEM control. You can do some more extra functions on the computer if you really want with this. It's not, once again, super needed. And then the power. That's the basics of what the back end looks like here. This is what it looks like going into the switch. It's a small USB. And this computer has C on both ends, but you can also get one that's just the traditional USB, and that's the USB 3 on this end here. So now we've seen some of the basic functions of the A10 Mini and seen the basic components you're going to need to make something like this work. Let's now jump into how do I actually set up a live stream and make sure it just doesn't get shown to absolutely everybody in the world because obviously we don't need everybody watching your third grade math lessons. We only want your students seeing this. So I'm going to go over a few of the things that you're going to need to make this work with the software and make sure you can go online and make sure you don't get big trouble and stuff like that. And make sure it's just your students actually seeing this because there are some legal issues. It's going to go out to more than just anybody and everybody. Now, yes, there are a ton of different ways you can do this. This is just the way I'm going to show you here, the way that I've set up things. And there are other ways. If you want to talk about those, let me know. Also, I am putting links to everything I'm talking about down below in the description. We also set this up in case you're not really comfortable actually setting up yourself. Feel free to contact us, we can help you set up something, or if you just have questions, we can help fill in there as well. So visit our website if you have questions. So to set up your switch with your computer, you're gonna to have to go to blackmagic.com slash support slash family slash ATM live, blah, 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 blah. Or you just click the link that I have in the description below. You are gonna see right here where there's blue boxes, that's the ATM live production switchers. Go ahead and click on that. Now exactly where it is in this box is gonna move around depending on what version they have out at the time because they just have their newest stuff at the top. Right now I'm downloading this top thing here. I'm going to be downloading it for Windows. If you have a Mac, I obviously download it for a Mac computer. Go ahead and click that. Save a computer where you would normally click and save things. You don't have to register your product here if you don't want to. You can put in all this information register. I've registered mine already. I'll just click download. Go ahead and click the download zip file. Select where you want to download it. I've already downloaded it here. Uh, but you go ahead and click save if you want to take a little while to download it and you're good to go so now that you have downloaded the atem switch software on the computer and installed that you can run your atem switch as if it's just a webcam so how do you get it onto youtube yes there are a ton of other options you can do it doesn't have to be youtube i'm just using youtube right now because it's free it's relatively easy there are some downsides to it there's also plus sides like being free and easy to use and everybody knows how to use it if you have a Google account already, like a Gmail account, you have a YouTube account, you could do that. Or if you're using something like Google Classroom, which seems to be pretty popular, and I would recommend that to a lot of places if you're still looking for a learning management system, something like that would work pretty well. This will not work here though if you're using like Windows Explorer, or sorry, not Windows Explorer, if you're using Internet Explorer, and if you're Edge, that's kind of is iffy whether it works or not. So I would recommend Chrome, or Firefox, you click the little camera up here and click go live. You will see something that looks very similar to this. Go ahead and click allow if it doesn't already have it allowed. And right now you see me on this webcam here. This is a different setup. This is my office right here. And you want to go ahead and create the name of it. I would recommend having it private or unlisted. Do not have it public. If you have it public, everybody will see it. I would go unlisted or private if you have it private you can actually put in the password restriction for or if you just have unlisted anybody with the link can go ahead and watch it um, i would probably put this as yes it's for kids it does change some of the video pop-ups and things like that that are going to be showing on the videos make it a little bit more safe for the kids you don't have to worry as much about other stuff coming up there are some ways you can get rid of that um but we're not going to go into all the ins and outs about how to get rid of other ads that might pop up and other things. But during your video, there will be no ads as long as you are live and you should be good to go. Just go ahead and click Yes Made for Kids. Click Next and then you will be ready to roll. Now we've gone through everything you need to know about the ATEM Mini. I really do, really do recommend this. I am not sponsored by ATEM. I really, really just like this piece of equipment. It's solid. The software is great. This thing's going to handle the wear and tear of being in a classroom with a bunch of young children. If it does get bumped off the table, not a big deal. I wouldn't recommend that they use the beach over the head with, but there's a lot of other reasons I wouldn't recommend them beating over their heads with this thing. Just they shouldn't be doing that. So if you need any help on how to set this up or this still scares you or you need any more help, 
let me know. We'd be glad to come and help you set up something like this. There's also links below on how to find the equipment you need to set up something like a live stream for your classroom. I'm Luke Melke. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.